What's up guys? This is a video update of the Mycology Project, which is part of the Nicaraguan Office series. It's one of the reasons I got the space here. Um, I split an office in Nicaragua with two of my other friends, and total we each pay about $110 to have a fully furnished place to work, right? It's pretty crazy, but I like Mycology. And let me get into that real quick, because I haven't talked to you guys that much about it. I've never really done it at scale. I've grown stuff in the past. Um, and it, it's a really fascinating process. I really like how fungus grow and learning the different environments that they grow well in and the way that they grow, because they have so many different stages in their life cycle. And it's more interesting to me than like a, a tree or something, because you can have um, a mushroom go through its whole life cycle just in a process of like 45 or 50 days starting from like a spore which is incredibly fast and it's that it's that rapidity that is so fascinating to me and another thing is here where I live in Nicaragua fresh mushrooms are incredibly expensive like you can get meat for cheaper than fresh mushrooms fresh mushrooms is something that like you could get one serving for like five to ten dollars and that's really expensive here relative to everything else and i looked more into why this is because i want to understand like okay why are fresh mushrooms so expensive here and at first i thought it was because of the climate and the climate plays a role but ultimately in india and places where they have a similar climate you can more reliably find mushrooms um, and I actually found a whole bunch of YouTube content from people in Indonesia and areas in in the east so to speak where they grow mushrooms in a tropical climate and it, then I saw look wow it's completely doable it's a bit different because you have to deal with the fact that it's too hot and it's too humid so you're going to have more problems and the problems you have are going to be different than people growing mushrooms in the united states but there's a little context and basically once you've purchased all the stuff necessary to like be a mushroom farmer and grow a bunch of mushrooms it's mostly just labor you grow the mushrooms out of waste products right and because i live in nicaragua I know that in the future, say I want to train someone else or have somebody else take over a process that I build up, I'm in a position where I could help somebody who really likes mycology have a well-paid job and I can have an employee doing this kind of stuff and really, once you have all the stuff set up, it's not money you have to keep in operation, it's labor. That's what makes mycology kind of more intensive. That's the thing you trade for it, right? So that's just some backstory. Now let me talk about what it actually looks like. What, what's happening? What is this mycology stuff? So I'm gonna show you three things that are currently going on in the house. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about each of these different three things because they're all part of different parts of the process, right? So this is a bunch of corn. Look at that, it's drying. What's that about? And then if you go over here, there's this big ass, what up Lucas? What up? There's this big ass pot, and if you look inside here, there's a bunch of jars. And so this was heated a bunch, and it's so hot I couldn't like touch it, now it's cooling down. Okay, so that's the other thing. Then, we also have, if we go over here, the main attraction, the actual mycelium. But first I need to turn the light on. All right, now. Here we go. Ah, look at that. This is oyster mushroom mycelium. And so I'm learning. This is by no means an exact process. Some of these are fucked up, I'll have to throw them away. I'm experimenting a lot. But basically, what you do is you get all this to grow in all that, and then you have a jar, and your jar's not all the way full. So you can shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. And then you have a bunch of mushroom stuff in, infused with the corn. And then you mix that with a bag of something called substrate. And that's how you grow mushrooms. All right, guys. So I don't have any part in the substrate. I'm just trying to get the spawn making part down. Because if you can make a lot of spawn, then you can grow mushrooms pretty easily. The spawn's definitely the hard part. But check this out. It's actually, like, kind of interesting how different some of the growth is 
So there's a, this is by no means a perfect process. I'm probably not going to be able to like actually get them to go further in the life cycle. And those of you who actually know mycology probably see problems in that kind of thing. And I know, I know, it's okay, bear with me. Basically, what I'm figuring out now is that I need a lot of jars. I need way more than four jars. I need a hundred jars. So I've just been getting more and more jars every time I find jars that are good enough, right? So this part is good. Basically, white and orange are good colors. However, like black, uh, this one's not too bad, but that whole area is kind of dark. You don't really want black. That's not really good. So that's problematic. And there's a reason that was closed because I let the, you, there's a process, the process for the coin. And in that process, I made a mistake last time. So I'm making a whole bunch more corn and basically you just keep having a whole bunch of places and you can take this out of the jar and put it in another jar and then this jar keeps going and the new jar keeps going. So eventually you have a bunch of this growing in like a hundred different jars and of those jars some can't be used because other stuff starts growing in them. But in some of them it all works out nice. And this camera doesn't really capture the color as well as in real life, but it looks really, really pretty. Like you get this interesting tone of like white, whites and oranges and reds. Um, and I think that the red actually means that it's in some level of stress. And that might just be because I'm every day, like, you know, about, I'm like, how are my mushrooms doing? And I'm opening them up and this closet's too hot. It's also not clean. Like, obviously you see there's, there's a bunch of things that need to be worked on, right? But surprisingly, things are going pretty well. And like these, the, this jar is actually almost completely colonized. It'll be the first one. So you see, it still has some blackness. So what I'm gonna learn is like, how, how does the, the mycelium, how well does it fight off like rot? How well does it fight off molds and these kinds of things? Um, there's a lot that I wanna learn. I'm very much a person who like, I'll, I'll read something and know that something's bad. For example, having too much water. But I will purposefully put myself in a situation where I see what happens and I really understand why that's bad. Like for these, for example, it's actually kind of bad that there's, there's a tiny, tiny bit of water here. Like you can see it going back and forth, right? That is bad. You don't want any kind of running water. You want it to be dry. So in the future, I have to dry the corn out more before I put it in the jar, basically, because um, I didn't use a fan last time and I didn't think of this part as drying out the corn. So what is that? What's going on over there? Well, this is what's going on. This is the beginning process to that corn. And all that happened here is it's corn, dry corn, and you put it in a container and you soak it with a little bit of bleach. And this is for like 12 to 24 hours, okay? And then once you do that, then you cook it. And just a little bit, you're not cooking it a whole lot. You wanna cook it so that you can squeeze it, but it's not turning into a, like a paste, right? And that basically makes it easy for the oyster mushroom to grow into it. And that's what that big ass container I have is for. The only other thing you have to do really is sterilize containers a lot because basically what you're making are these little environments that have some level of airflow, right? Like see how they have holes on the top? This is actually two layers of tinfoil. Um, and I'm testing this because uh, the lid process is hard because it's not just a jar that you're growing stuff in. It's a jar you have to superheat with the stuff in it and then put the, the, the oyster mushroom organism into it after you've cooled it down. So you, you have to do a lot of superheating stuff and that really screws with plastic and that kind of thing. So that's actually why I'm using a disposable kind of lid. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff I'm ignoring here. Like you wouldn't want to, like you don't want to be using a dirty closet like this. You, you want more airflow. It's way too hot here. This is a room with air conditioning, but I'm really trying to learn how I can do this in a way that I can teach to other Nicaraguan people 
And if I can do it without air conditioning, that just means that there's way more ability for Nicaraguans to pursue it because less people have air conditioning here and air conditioning is really expensive. So that would also increase the costs. And like I said, this is mostly a labor intensive thing. So it's actually really well purposed for the, uh, the Nicaraguan situation, even though it's a tropical environment. There's other factors that weigh in, right? But some things you can see that I want to illustrate to you guys that are really interesting, actually, are that um, how, how the fungus needs to breathe. Because you may think that I just put the fungus in the top and then it's growing like that, right? But that's actually not what happened. I had pieces of the fungus and they were broken up. They were just individual pieces of corn and they were distributed throughout the whole jar. And what's interesting is that same thing happened to every single jar that you see here, right? But on every single jar, the fungus grew strongest and first at the top where there is a lot of open air access. And this is really interesting because it, it, it definitely recurred. Like you can see how if I turn it, there's areas where it's deeper, but in every single one of these jars, this one, I'll explain that in a second, but on every single one of these jars, you can see it primarily has grown on the top in the part with air access. And so this is also another experiment that that one looks way different. Don't, don't worry too much about it. So let's get, why is this one on its side? So all of them were up like this, but then I, I noticed how much better the growth is in the areas that are exposed to air directly. So I figured, well, why, why do I have the jars placed this way? Because I can redistribute the contents in the jars however I want. So if air access is good, then what I should do is I should orient the jars so that more of the corn has the direct air access. And what I've also noticed is that most of the rot tends to happen towards the bottom as well, where the moisture collects. So it, it seems to be that in this environment, at least, or the environment I live in, which is a very warm, humid environment, um, if I'm not controlling the environment, like I said, this is literally a closet in a, a house that doesn't have air conditioning being used. There's no control over the temperature right now, right? Or the humidity. The only thing is that these jars are pretty contained. There's a little bit of airflow. So slowly over time, they would dry out, but it would take a long time. And that's kind of the balance that's being made quite apparent to me is that you actually want quite a lot of airflow. So theoretically, there's some way to allow more air distribution throughout this jar so that it grew in a forceful, strong way very quickly because you don't want too much time to pass before the mycelium has colonized everything. Because if it gets too far and it colonizes all of this, sorry, if that, if that takes too long, then the chance of it rotting or a mold showing up or something else, a contaminant showing up is much more likely. So if you can develop a system that allows the mycology or the mushroom, sorry, the mycelium, Jesus, the mycelium, it allows it to quickly colonize the entire batch, that is then more resistant to being infected. The point, like this part, is the most resistant to infection. Once it's in that form, you don't have to worry as much about it, okay? It's before everything's in that form that's problematic. And so that's why I tilted this over. You can see that if I actually look, here's the top part. It hasn't really started to be... What, what you find is that if you touch this or move it around too much, it loses its fluffiness and it's not like active. But when it's really active, it's like glowing, growing, fluffy, and oh man, I, I love this stuff. It's so cool. I know it probably looks na la nasty to some of you, but this actually begs the question of why not just use smaller jars in general? Because on one hand, there's more spawn here, but by the time this goes to all of this corn, it's probably going to have mold or some kind of rot there, right? This one is actually growing pretty well, you can see, right? And what's interesting 
is this one actually had a different format of lid. I was using these bell jar lids, and what I was doing is I had a little piece of cotton, and I had one lid like this with one cotton, and one lid like this with two cotton. And what I saw is that the lid with one cotton, which was actually, I think, this jar, it had the least growth by far, then the second least was this one, and then all the other lids, across all the jars, just these tinfoil lids, had much better growth. And I was like, whoa, that's interesting. And that was when I first started realizing how relevant the air is, and it might actually be that there isn't enough air in this jar to support this amount of mycelium well. This might be too full. It's completely possible that you actually have to fill them like halfway. And that gives you more flexibility with this kind of system, right? Because this way, there's more of the corn that's exposed to air. And the air has trouble, so the least air is going to be here. Whereas the highest access to air is going to be the exposed area here. So over time, the mycelium grows, and the mycelium here provides air to the mycelium over here, and it, it functions as one organism, so it's, it's okay, right? But it's, it's something quite interesting. And what I found is that these lids actually did better. So these are actually made, they're two layers of tinfoil. And you remove one layer, and then there's a big hole that you can put stuff into. But it just kind of reduces the chance you're going to put some kind of contamination in. But ultimately, some of these jars are going to get contaminated. Some of them already are. If some of you are experienced, you might already be able to see problems, right? I mean, like, like I said, there should not be any kind of standing water there. That's, like, bad. But it looks so pretty. Oh, man. I really like these. And I got to say, they don't smell anywhere near as bad as the first time I did this. <laughs> so this is an experiment because I'm trying to see... I don't know if you can tell really well, but there's a black stuff up there, right? So what that black stuff is, that black stuff is leaves because there's a giant ass mango tree here. And what I'm trying to figure out is, can I grow this in the waste of that mango tree? Can the waste of the mango tree grow oyster mushrooms, basically? So you can see here, we actually have colonization very close to being finished. It's on the edges, it's on the bottom, it's just not in the core. And so now I'm going to see, will the mushroom grow up into this leaf base, or do I need to do more prep? That is the first part of the next phase. Because basically, eventually I'm going to have a bunch of this, and I'm going to have to grow it in substrate. And that's when you can actually start getting mushrooms. For now, I'm just trying to figure out, how do I make a bunch of spawn? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll keep you guys updated. See you next time. Ciao.